This video is going to take your editing skills to the next level. Pay attention because I'm going to show you the easiest and quickest way to make three of the best scenes from Magnates Media's video, The Untold Truth of Nintendo. I was able to recreate his entire style in just a few short hours by focusing on the most important aspects. I'm going to teach you everything I learned in just 15 minutes, and by the end of this video, you'll know how to use 3D lighting and camera comfortably in After Effects. Also, how to use textures and overlays to create an atmosphere in each scene. And most importantly, use all of these skills to improve your own projects. If some of what I just said doesn't make sense to you, don't worry because it will all make sense by the end. So let's get started with our first scene. So to start, I'm going to bring in my assets. If you want to use the exact assets I'm using, you can find them in my Discord server which is in the description. If you want to know where Magnates Media gets his assets from, I'm going to show you in the next section when we get deeper into it. For now, I want to show you how to work with the 3D camera. So come here and click New Camera. If you've never worked with a 3D camera before, don't worry because I'm going to show you a trick that makes it super easy. And if you have used it before, make sure you pay even closer attention because this trick is going to save you a ton of time and you'll never have to think about it again. So with your camera settings open here, just go ahead and leave them on the default settings. And before we use the camera, I'm going to go ahead and position everything in my scene like we need it. So the first thing I want to do is create that black background for everything to set on. To do that, I'm going to invert this white to black and this black to white. An easy way to do that is to bring in the tint effect, and that's going to allow us to mess with the values of all the white colors and all of the black colors. So I'm going to set the white to a complete black, and I'm going to come up here and map the black to kind of a lighter gray. And you can see right away that's going to give us a nice little background to set everything on. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this to the back. Now I'm going to hide everything else for now except this NES game, and I'm going to turn 3D on for all of these layers just by clicking this box here. So we could scale this down and we could position this where we want it. Since it's a 3D object, we have all these controls with the X, Y, and Z positions. Once I've got this one where I want it, I'm gonna duplicate it and just put one more as well. Now I'm gonna make my switch visible. I'm gonna scale this down and put it somewhere in the middle. Now you can see the center of my switch is transparent. So whatever I put behind it is gonna show up. So I'm gonna take this loading screen and I'm gonna send it to one layer down. And I'm gonna scale this down to fit. And to make sure these always stay together, I'm going to parent the loading screen to the switch image. So now if I move the switch, the loading screen will move with it. So now that that's done, we can actually get into the fun stuff. I'm going to select the switch real quick and just make sure it's in the center of the composition. So I'm just going to eyeball that just a little bit and line it up. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. Now we can go ahead and make our camera visible as well. So to actually control the camera, instead of coming in here to the settings where it's just really hard to get a good rotation and position and everything like that, I'm actually going to create a new object and we're going to create a new object and we're going to rename this object camera controller so if we take this camera object and we parent it to this camera controller now if we move our null object it'll move the camera with it and it's a lot easier to animate this null object than it is to animate the camera by itself so i'm going to turn on 3d for this null object and now all we have to do is set a keyframe where we want it to end and i'm going to bring this up because i want this to be the final position i'm just going to come out just a little bit so we kind of have a zoom in animation on this. And I'm going to select both of these and come keyframe assistant and set them to easy ease. And then I'll just come into my speed graph editor real quick and just give this a little slow down. So it'll start fast and slow down. So now if we play that back and look at it, it's looking pretty good. The next thing we need to do is we're going to add one more object to this and this is going to be a light. So you can just leave all the settings on default and we'll edit it once it's actually in our scene. So it's in our scene and you can see it made everything around it darker and kind of lit up the middle. We want to bring the position of this back quite a bit. So just come into the position property and change the Z. We could also drop it down and come into the light options and mess with these settings as well. So that's a pretty good introduction to the 3D camera. And the next section, I'm going to show you an even more complex scene and we're going to break that down as well. So in this section, we're going to be animating this connection chart where it shows everybody's family relationships. Going into After Effects, let's go ahead and get started with making that background. So I'm going to bring in the Nintendo logo, and this is pretty big, so I'm going to scale it down a little bit. I'm going to create a new solid, and I'm going to set the solid to be a red color. If you want the exact color code, this is it right here. I'm just going to bring this down. So you can see we have this white, and to actually get rid of this white, I'm going to use what's called a color key. And what that's going to let us do is remove a specific color from the image. So if I come up here to the key color and I select this white, it's going to let us key it out. And I'm going to bump this edge thin up just by one to move any white on the edges. So I think that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring in my textures. So textures are pretty good if you want to polish your animations and add a lot of realism to it. A good place to get textures is from this website right here. Everything on it is free and they have some pretty high quality textures. So you can see like this grungy cardboard would probably be good for something that we're doing. And you can just come over here and filter by whatever you want. So I have two textures from Texture Labs I'm going to bring in. 
one is a grunge texture and one is a scratch metal texture. So you can see these are pretty big, so I'm just gonna select both of them and scale them down. Okay, so I'm gonna hide the scratch metal texture and focus on this grunge texture. So I have my image visible here and before I actually apply it, I wanna invert the colors. So I'm just gonna bring in an invert effect. And I'm gonna do this because in my final image, I don't want the blacks to show up, I want the whites to show up. But I don't want the whites to be this massive blanket. I only want the scratches and grunge to be white. So if we invert it, it just swaps the colors around like this. So now we could just come into our blend modes right here and we can use uh, something like add, which is gonna take all the white values from this image and apply it to everything under it. Now I'm going to make my scratch metal texture visible and we're gonna do essentially the same thing, but since we have a lot of light colors, we're gonna use a different blend mode. So for this one, I'm gonna use overlay. If I had the first one, you could kind of see down here what it's, what it's doing for our image. So now that we have that done, we could get into our actual animation. So now I'm going to go ahead and type out the text for the entire flowchart. So I went ahead and typed everything out, now I'm just going to center this up a little bit. So I think that's looking pretty good, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my images now. So I have this image uh, representing his wife, and then I have an image of him as well that I'm going to bring in. And I'm just going to select both of these and click the center. And make sure you set to selection and it's going to center it to the text or whatever you last selected. So I'm going to duplicate this and just bring it down. Okay, so everything's lined up now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that border that you see around the edges. So to do that, I'm actually going to use a rough and edges effect. And if you swap this to rough and color, and I zoom in here so you can see a little bit better, you can see it's putting this brown color around the edges. So I'm going to set this to white, and I'm going to bring this border up so it's a little bit thicker. And we want to bring the sharpness down. We get a solid line, and same with the fractal influence. So I'm going to bring my scale up as well. I think it's looking pretty good. Maybe make the border just a little bit bigger. And I'm going to copy this effect and paste it on the other images. So it's a little difficult to see because this is white on white. So I'm just going to take a levels effect and plop that on this. And this is going to let us mess with our white values. So I'm going to bring the white down here up just so it gets to be a little bit more gray. And I'm going to do this before the rough edges. And that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to copy and paste that to this as well. So because of how it images, this rough and edges is looking a little bit different. Uh, so we can fix that by messing with the settings. I'm just going to bring the scale down a little bit on this one and make sure that's reflected on both. So I changed these just a little bit to match the other two as well, so everything's looking good now. I'm going to give us a little bit more space here, we're going to start drawing that line. So to do the line, it's pretty simple, you're just going to take the pen tool and you want to start here and we're just going to come across and connect them like this. And we're going to make a separate shape layer for the second part. So we need just a little bit of space. And I'm going to come here and about in the center of it just connect it like this okay just making sure everything fits i'm going to bring this up a little bit so it's more in the center i'm going to come over here and i'm going to grab the glow effect i'm going to add this to all of our text layer just keeping it on the default settings and that's going to make everything look a little bit more vivid also going to take both of these shape layers and add it there as well okay so i'm going to take both of these and just center them up a little bit more and i think that's pretty good so now we want to animate the this line here so the way we're going to do that is we're going to come into the shape layer and drop this down and we're going to add a trim paths and the way we want this to animate is both sides at the same time so we have these end and start positions we're going to set them both to zero okay so i've got them both set as zero i'm going to set a keyframe for that and i'm just going to bring up the end position a little bit so we're actually going to move this offset right here and i'm going to come forward a little bit in my timeline and i'm going to bring this end about to this and i'm going to start to about here at 100. So we want to position this in a way using this offset that's going to center everything up for us. So as we decrease this start position, we want it to be expanding and as we increase this end position, we want it to be expanding. So we can see we're kind of getting some discrepancy at this point. So that's the point we want to line up. So now if we play it back, we have this start here coming to the center. And if we mess with this end position, we have this position here coming to the center. So let's just go ahead and keyframe those now. So I want it to come in like this. We we'll just need to flip these keyframes around now. And this one needs to go ahead and approach zero completely. So I'm gonna give easy ease to both of these. And you can see it's not quite in the center though. So I'm just gonna mess with this offset just a little bit so it's centered up. So now if we play it back, it's looking like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down on my timeline. And I want to take these two elements with the name and the picture and I'm going to do Control shift c and I'm going to move everything to pre-compositions just so we can control both of these at once. And I'm going to come to this pre-comp and I'm just going to name it Coma Honda. So I'm going to set a position for this and we want this to kind of fling out from the initial position. So we want it to be behind the man and then she kind of slides out at the beginning. So we want to end in this position and we want her to start in this position so I'm just going to bring her over here. Okay, I think it's pretty good. I'm going to set both of these to easy ease, come to the speed graph, and just give it some motion. 
It's a little bit too fast, so I'm just gonna give it some more space. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And we want these lines to start uh, just a little bit more down. So I'm going to select both of these, and I'm also going to select this shape layer here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pre-comp it so we can animate these all at once. And I'm just going to rename this to her name as well. So now I want this to fade in, so I'm just going to set an opacity keyframe. And we want this to start at zero. And once these lines connect right here, we want it to fade up. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. Okay, so we have a pretty simple animation here. Now we're going to take it up a notch. I'm going to select all of this and pre-compose it. And I'm going to call this the family tree. And as soon as I create that, I'm going to come back into this pre-composition and I'm going to take this solid down here and I'm going to scale it up significantly. And now just clicking tab, I could come back to our main comp. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is make this a 3D layer and then I'm going to create a controller like we did before. Rename this controller and I'm going to create a camera as well. And this camera is going to be de default settings once again. So I'm going to bring this controller to the top and turn 3D on for it. And I'm going to pin it the camera to the controller. So we want to start zoomed in. Uh, so I'm going to set a position and I'm going to set a scale property for the current position so we don't lose it. And I'm just going to bring this ahead in our timeline. And we want to start zoomed in to the man here. So I'm going to change the scale to zoom in and then I'm just going to drag this null over to where we want it and you see the advantage of having this null now it's really easy to control the camera so we kind of want to follow it as uh, she comes out so we're going to come forward a little bit and we're just going to bring it down here and then we want to come back to our starting position so you can see just using this null object makes the camera super easy to control and it's going to save you a lot of time i'm going to give all of these easy ease and i'm going to come in here and i'm going to select these and just Give them all kind of a ramp down. So they'll start fast and then ramp down. And I actually don't like how the scale is changing here. So I'm just gonna keep this consistent by copy and pasting this keyframe. Okay, I like that a lot better. And like we did before, I'm gonna come new and I'm gonna add a light as well. And just keep it default setting, okay? And this light, we want to bring the Z index up. Okay, I'm gonna come into my light options and change this intensity uh, just a little bit to make it a little bit brighter. So by this point, you should be understanding the 3D camera a lot more and how you could do some uh, very interesting 3D effects pretty quickly and pretty easily. In this next section, I'm going to show you some other cool stuff you can do. So let's get right into that. Okay, so this next one, we're going to take that Null object concept one step farther and I'm going to show you some more things you could do with a Null controller. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in my assets. Essentially, I have these frames and I have two images that I want to swap between. So we have this first image, which is of Tokyo Streets. I'm going to put that behind my overlay and I'm just going to take both of these and pre-compose them. And I'm just going to name this frame one and I'm going to add that for now and just bring in my second image as well and scale this up just a little bit so it fits in nicely. Okay, and then I'm going to take both of these and I'm going to pre-compose them. Just name this frame two. So we have both the frames now. I'm going to create a new object and this is what's going to be driving the transition. I'm going to rename this controller. I'm also going to center it in my composition. So now I'm going to bring it all the way out and this is going to act as a pivot point for uh, both of these pre-compositions. So next I'm going to go come in both of these pre-comps and I'm going to click Y to grab my anchor tool. I'm going to take my anchor point and snap it to the anchor point of the null object. I'm going to do that for both layers. Okay. So what I want to do next is rotate these and we're going to put one above the other just like this where it's barely off frame. And now we could just simply select both of these and parent them to this controller object. So now if we come into this controller object, we set a keyframe here and we come forward, we can just simply rotate it in just like that. And to take this one step further, go ahead and give both of these an easy ease. And I like to make my graph something like this, where it kind of speeds up and slows down. So we kind of get that hint that a movement and then it speeds up and gets into it. Like that. I also turn on motion blurs for these layers. You can turn on motion blur for everything we've done in this tutorial thus far, and it will just look a little bit better when you have that movement going. So make sure you subscribe for more tutorials like this, and join the editor's discord for free textures, overlays, presets, and anything I make in my videos I put into that server. Uh, also click this next video to keep improving. See you in the next one.